As we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, the last thing that any of us should be doing is challenging the authority of the Lord. God, he is almighty. The Lord, he is omnipotent, he's omniscient, he is omnipresent, he is all-knowing. He is everywhere at all times, he is all-powerful. And so, something that has been shown to us over and over and over again here in our lessons throughout this quarter is the power of the Lord. And what we should be doing when it comes to the power of the Lord and his authority is trusting in him. We should lean on him, we should depend on him. Are you doing that today? That is a question that is raised once again here in our Sunday School lesson this week. Do you trust in the Lord? Do you believe in his only begotten son? We certainly should be doing that, trusting in the Lord and having faith. And so that is raised again here in our lesson this week as we take a look at the 14th chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 22nd verse there, where our lesson, it picks up with Jesus telling the disciples to sell over to the other side, to Caponium, they were to sell over there without him. This is a lesson this week that takes place right after Jesus performed the miracle of, of feeding 5,000 with just a few pieces of bread and a few pieces of fish. Something that we're told over in John's gospel, in the sixth chapter of John's gospel and the 15th verse, is that Jesus, after he had performed the miracle, the people, they desired to force Jesus to be their king, a king that was in, in their image. You know, we always want God to, to move as we would dictate him to move, as we would want to force him to move, rather than, again, trusting in him, rather than allowing God to work on our behalf. God, again, he knows what is best for us. Do you trust that the Lord knows what, what is best for you? So rather than trying to dictate to God how he should move for us, again, we should allow God to just simply work for us. And again, we should trust in, in the work that the Lord is doing for us because again, the Lord, he desires to bless us. So we must learn to trust in the fact that the Lord, he desires to bless us. So we'll see there in the 23rd verse that Jesus, he managed to direct the people away from himself so that he could go up into the mountain by himself to pray. So again, let us understand what has happened here. Jesus, he has sent the disciples away from himself. He told them to go to the other side of the sea without him. And then he went up into the mountain and he went up there to pray. A lot of this may seem random to some of us as we're coming into the middle of this story, but I would always tell you that there is nothing that is random when it comes to the Lord. There's no such thing as a coincidence when it comes to the Lord. There was a lesson that Jesus had to teach today and we're going to see that lesson as it begins now. We'll take a look there in the 25th verse where scripture tells us, by the fourth watch of the night, that's about 3 a.m. to sunrise, Jesus, he began to make his way to the disciples, not by boat, scripture tells us, but by walking on the water. The verse prior to that tells us that the disciples, they hadn't got all that far from, from where he was, from the land. They were battling winds that was pushing against them. Scripture tells us that they were stuck out in the middle of the sea. So this is a, this is a good metaphor for us if you think about it. This is a good figure for us to take a look at because when we think about our life, how often do you find yourself pushing against winds or winds pushing against you in life? How often do you find yourself hindered from where you are trying to get to in life? And something that you have to think about today, something that the, the lesson poses to us is, what do we do in those moments? Do you try to battle against those winds by yourself? Some of us, we often do that. Some of us, we, we try to get out ahead of the Lord rather than, again, trusting in Him, leaning on Him. So what do you do when the storms of life, when they come your way, when they push, when they blow against you? My hope would be is that you would wait on the Lord. My hope would be is that you would, in other words, trust in Him, have faith in Him, cry out to Him in those moments. There is absolutely nothing wrong with crying out to the Lord in those moments of desperation when you are in need, when you are fighting against the storms of life. And so we'll see there that as they looked out to the sea, they saw a figure on the sea, but they couldn't recognize the figure that was out there on sea. They thought that it was a ghost. So I have to imagine in this moment that with everything that was going on here, that the disciples, that they, they had to be wishing for, for Jesus to be there with them with the storm that they were battling. And then all of a sudden they look out to see and there's this figure out there, 
but they could not recognize that it was Jesus. You have to, again, if you put yourself in their mindset, they knew that they had left Jesus behind them as they were traveling across to the other side, right? And so in their minds, they certainly would not have been looking for Jesus to, to be with them. Nonetheless, for someone to be out at sea and for that one walking on sea, for that figure to be Jesus, they was not looking for him. But again, in this figure here that we see here is that Jesus, the Lord, he is always with us. When we least expect it, he is always with us. In, in our moments of desperation, when we think that God is not with us, he is even closer to us. And so we have to open up our eyes, not these eyes, but we have to open up our spirit and trust and know that God, that he is with us. As the Lord said, he will never leave us he will never forsake us. And so again, scripture, it shows us there in the 27th verse that immediately Jesus, he spoke to the disciples saying to them, be of good cheer. Don't be afraid. That's something that Jesus, that's something that the Lord, he expresses to us all of time. You see your fear, your anxieties, your worries, it can block you from seeing the Lord. It can block you from recognizing and realizing that the Lord, that he is near to you. And so again, Jesus, he said there, he said to them, be of good cheer, be uplifted in your soul. It is I, Jesus said, do not be afraid. Now, something that we'll see there is that Peter in the 28th verse that he didn't buy that it was Jesus that was there with them on the water. So he said to the figure, the ghost that they thought it was, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water. Now, what have I told all of you about using that word if when it comes to the Lord? Again, if you think about this for a moment, this is almost like a prayer from Peter. And, and we saw this with the man who, who had a son who had a demon that was possessing the son. He said, if it is possible for you, Jesus, to, to, to have compassion on us, have compassion on us, move on our behalf, help my son, right? You, you recall that, I hope that you do. And I said then, is that we have to be weary of using that word if in our prayers. Jesus, he said to the man, he said to them, it's not about if I can, it's about whether or not you can believe in what I am able to do. So again, when we speak to the Lord, when we are talking to God, when we cry out to him, when we pray to him, we need to eliminate that word if from our vocabulary. We again, we need to pray in faith. We need to pray in confidence. Again, we need to trust in the Lord. And this is something that Peter and the rest of the disciples, this is something that they needed to learn as well. Not to use that word if, but again, have faith and trust in the Lord. So we'll see there that Jesus, he said to Peter, come. He beckoned him to come. And we'll see that Peter, he stepped off the boat. And scripture tells us that Peter actually did walk on the water to go to Jesus. But something happened. We'll see there in the 30th verse what it was that had happened. Peter, he saw that the wind was boisterous. He saw that the wind was, was kicking up the waves, if you will. And so again, you, you have to imagine here, if you put yourself in, in Peter's mind, you have to imagine that Peter was thinking to himself, what in the world am I doing out here on this water, trying to walk on water? I'm not supposed to be able to do this. I'm not supposed to be doing this at all. And so doubt began to creep into the picture, right? Doubt began to creep into Peter's mind and doubt, it, it can be detrimental to you. I want you to understand, doubt is a poison. You don't need to uh, let doubt poison you. You don't let it need to poison your soul because doubt will keep you from moving forward. And as you have probably heard me say before, Faith, it always pushes forward. Faith wants to move forward, but doubt wants to sit still. Doubt wants to sit down. Doubt doesn't want you to go anywhere. We cannot get to our blessing. We cannot receive our blessing if we are filled with a heart of doubt. Doubt is something that the Lord does not love. So again, we must eliminate the word if from our vocabulary. We must eliminate doubt from, from the way in which we go. We cannot move if we have doubt in, in our hearts. So we'll see there 
that Peter cried out to Christ. And as soon as he cried out, he was already being lifted up by Christ. Jesus, he asked him there in the 30th verse, why did you doubt? So let me first say this about this moment here and what it teaches us is that Jesus, he is never going to let you fall. Okay. When you cry out to, when you cry out to the Lord, he is never going to let you fall. He will lift you up. As that old hymn says, he will lift you up by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. Again, authority, power. We must have faith. And again, we must trust the Lord. Again, even when you fear that God is not listening to you, even when you begin to think for a second that the Lord is allowing you to remain in a pit, I tell you today, cry out to him and have faith in him. The prayer of doubt, that's one that's not answered. But the prayer of faith, that is one that is immediately answered by the Lord. So again, trust in him and everything will be all right. We see that when Jesus and Peter got into the boat, the winds, they ceased. And after that, Jesus and the disciples, they made their way to Genesaret. And we'll see that when they made it there, the people, they were rushing out to send their sick to Jesus with them begging just to touch the hem of his garment to be healed. The woman who had an issue of blood, she begged, she just, she desired, she desired the same thing. All I have to do is touch the hem of his garment and, and I'll be healed. But the scripture, it tells us there that, again, as many as touched him, touched the hem of his garment, we're told there that they were made perfectly well. And so the reason why I mentioned the woman with the issue of blood there, she had the desire. She was thinking to herself, all I have to do is touch the hem of his garment and, and I'll be healed. But again, it wasn't the fact that she touched the hem of his garment that had healed her. It was her faith that had healed her. And again, the scripture says that there were many who touched the hem of his garment there and they were healed. But again, it was not the touching of the hem of, of his garment that had healed them. It was their faith. They had faith that Jesus could heal, heal them. And that's what their faith did. It, it again, it allowed them to be made well. That's what our faith can do for us. We aren't able to physically touch Jesus, right? We can't lay a hand on Jesus, but the Lord, he will certainly make you whole. The Lord will certainly make you well. And so again, this is a lesson that is about trusting in the power and the authority of the Lord. It's also a lesson about being disciplined in your faith. Again, something that happens to us is that there are a lot of times that we'll get out ahead of the Lord rather than trust in the Lord. God, he will say, wait on him. And instead of us waiting on him, we will move out ahead of him saying that, well, God isn't moving on our behalf. So let me go and do this. Let me go out and get my blessing in. And we'll get out ahead of God. And, and what happens to us? We sink. We, we fall into the waves and we have to cry out to the Lord. Again, trust in him. Don't get out ahead of him. Just simply follow the Lord. And as you follow the Lord, he will bless you. Something else that often happens is when the Lord beckons us to come, when he tells us to move, some of us, we, we are reluctant to move. We are hesitant to move. And again, what happens to us when we are reluctant, when we are hesitant to move? Again, we sit still, we, we sink, we are unable to get to our blessing. And so once again, we must learn to trust in the Lord. Again, when, when the Lord tells us to move, we should move. Again, we should be obedient in our faith. We should be disciplined in our faith. And again, we should follow him, we should trust him. That is how we receive. That is how we make it to our blessing. The last thing that any of us should ever do is block ourselves from making it to our blessing and from receiving our blessing. So let's stop doing that. Let's stop getting out ahead of the Lord and let's stop being slow and reluctant in our faith. Let us always be disciplined. Let us always move in our faith. And again, I tell you today, when you trust in the authority of the Lord, he will, he will again bless you. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take something away from this lesson that you will apply it to yourself and that you will share it with someone 
somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday school lesson next week. Make sure that you're following this channel so that you can get the next notification for next week's Sunday school lesson so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss the Sunday school lesson, the sermons, the Bible studies, or the food for thoughts. Make sure that you're following this channel today.